lots to do in Istanbul, the bridge between Europe and Asia. This city is described as a bridge between Europe and Asia, a location where East and West collide and where cultures have coexisted for ages. But not everyone is aware of its diversity, which is endlessly fascinating. It's one of the finest cities in the world and has had a significant impact on the history of our wonderful planet. It also happens to be an enormous, chaotic metropolis that won't stop for anyone. The attractions here are just as diverse and interesting as the city itself. Here, food, intrigue, and fun seamlessly converge. It takes some getting acclimated to its culture, but give yourself to the wonder of this city. Now, let's look at the top five things that you can do in Istanbul, the bridge between Europe and Asia. Number five, visit the spectacular Hagia Sophia. The colossal architectural wonder known as the Hagia Sophia was first constructed as a Christian basilica over 1,500 years ago. The Hagia Sophia has served as a durable representation of the international city, much like the Eiffel Tower in Paris or the Parthenon in Athens. As noteworthy as the building itself is, its significance in Istanbul's and the world's history is likewise noteworthy and touches on global politics, religion, art, and architecture issues. A revolution in architectural history, the dome of the Hagia Sophia is 180 feet high and 100 feet wide. Four minarets that were constructed during the Ottoman era surround the enormous dome today. The Hagia Sophia underwent renovations to become a mosque because Islam served as the Ottomans' primary religion. The Ottomans covered several of the ancient mosaics with Islamic calligraphy. The names of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad, the first four caliphs, and the Prophet's two grandsons are featured on the panels or medallions that were hung on the columns of the nave. There was also gold calligraphy covering the mosaic on the main dome, which was thought to depict a picture of Christ. As is customary in mosques, a mirab or nave was mounted on the wall to denote the direction toward Mecca, one of Islam's holiest cities. Although the upper gallery is inaccessible and most of the building's antique marble floor has been covered by carpets, parts of the mosaics are protected by retractable screens and its historic magnificence is still spectacular. Number four, roam around the Grand Bazaar. One of the best places to shop in the world is Istanbul's Grand Bazaar, which is also the largest market in the world. The bazaar has its mosque, post office, restaurants, banks, and police station, in addition to housing some 4,000 stores along its 64 streets and smaller lanes. During the years of Ottoman control, the bazaar gradually grew larger and absorbed more surrounding land. A trip here is more than just a chance to buy trinkets. It is one of the best areas to visit in Istanbul to get enlightenment about Ottoman life and get a feel for the city with its magnificent arcaded main streets and narrow lanes running between Hans, ancient trader inns, and Bedestins, market halls. In recent years, bringing lamps and lanterns home from Turkey has become incredibly fashionable. From mosaic glass table lamps to metal filigree chandeliers and ceiling lampshades, the Grand Bazaar features a wide variety of contemporary styles and patterns. Look for the circular sections, jugs, and carafes in the Hittite style, which are based on Anatolian patterns from the Bronze Age if you want to get something special. The Grand Bazaar is a truly one-of-a-kind structure with a rich past and ties to Turkish culture. Shopping at the Grand Bazaar is a must-do, even if you hadn't intended to do any while visiting Turkey. Don't pass up the opportunity to enjoy one of Istanbul's oldest cultural experiences. Number three, the Basilica Cistern. Under Istanbul's streets and homes, there are countless antiquated cisterns. The Basilica Cistern, Istanbul's most unique tourist destination, is the larger of the two that are accessible to the general public. Across the street from the Hagia Sophia is where you will find the entrance to Basilica Cistern. To serve the water requirements of the Great Palace, this enormous underground water reservoir was constructed in 532 under the rule of Emperor Justinian I. This incredible feat of engineering serves as further proof that the Byzantine Empire was at its height at that time. Visitors can stroll on the concrete walkways while taking in the muted lighting and the chilly temperatures after entering the underground water facility through a flight of stairs. To see the two Medusa heads, make sure to walk to the far left corner of the cistern. With one skull turned upside down and the other leaning to one side, both heads are casually employed as column bases. Although there is a theory that they were recycled from an old building from the late Roman era, neither their positioning nor their provenance has been determined as of yet. You may take a stroll through the forest of hundreds of marble columns and enjoy the underground chill on a hot summer day. Number two, ride ferries. The ultimate Istanbul experience is boarding one of the city's renowned flotilla of ferries. 
you will get to experience the passengers' views of palaces, parks, and elaborate timber mansions on both the Asian and European shores. The Marmara Sea and the Black Sea are connected by the Bosphorus, which spans from south to north. Numerous ferries travel up the Bosphorus, stopping at quaint beach communities like Arnavutkoy. Ottoman sultans began locating their homes along the coastline facing the Bosphorus around the beginning of the 19th century. Today, ferry cruises, which pass very near, are the finest way to view the magnificent neoclassical Baroque facade of their palaces, such as the Dolma Bace. Do what locals do if you want to feel at home. Before getting on the ferry, buy a simit, a round bread with sesame on it, and feed the seagulls while you cruise along the Bosphorus. The majority of Istanbul residents take one of the dozen ferries that travel continuously over the Bosphorus from Europe to Asia. Any route offers some of the best views of Istanbul's historical buildings during the 20-minute journey. Whether you choose a long or brief cruise, both are likely to be unforgettable. Number one, the magnificence of Suleyman Mosque. One of Istanbul's biggest and most significant mosques is the Suleymaniye Mosque. The legendary architect Sinan and Suleyman the Magnificent, who ordered its construction, are both buried inside the complex. This mosque dates back to the 16th century and is situated atop one of the seven hills that make up the old city. One of Istanbul's best views can be enjoyed from this location, which looks out over rooftops and domes to the meeting point of the Bosphorus and Golden Horn Rivers and beyond. The mosque itself is regarded as one of the greatest works of Mimar Sinan because of its perfect symmetry and lofty interior. With large trees, a green lawn, and a cemetery covered in roses, the complex surrounding it is peaceful and welcoming. The central dome is 47 meters high, but it's not just the enormous size that is stunning. The interior is also well furnished. The supporting semi-domes to the northwest and southeast, as well as the imposing arched spaces to the southwest and northeast, reinforce the sense of space and light. The mosque's entrance is flanked by a forecourt with a central fountain, like all other imperial mosques in Istanbul. Rectangular window lunettes made of blue iznik tile adorn the mosque's front facade. A madrasa, which houses a library with 110,000 manuscripts, is located south of the mosque. The Grand Bazaar, Spice Bazaar, Rustem Pasha Mosque, and New Mosque are all nearby because it's located on the historic Old Peninsula. Topkapi Palace and the Blue Mosque can both be reached by foot from here. Surely one of the most beautiful mosques in Istanbul. There's a lot more Istanbul has to offer, and this was just a beautiful rundown of what it is capable of tempting you with. So, when are you planning to visit Istanbul? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, where to next?